What is up, everyone? JD here. I hope you're doing well today. Really excited for this review for you, man. Let's get in it. All right, guys, we are checking out a new collab from our boys over at Devo Knives. This one is in collab with Stasa23. We are checking out the new Fireball. So I did go ahead and pick up the 80s Camo Carbon. You guys know I like that one. But they have a Black Pearl and an Electric Blue one. The Electric Blue one is their only pvd version it's not a dlc it's a pvd the other two are satin finished and kubi just continued to do to do a really good job with that this is a very interesting design it is a sandwich style backstrap construction on top of carbon fiber scales with a liner on the inside nested liners you have relief cuts on the inside of the show side here and then you have the liner lock here as well. This is the first design I think I've experienced, and I could be wrong. Um, it's been a little while since I've taken my Growler V2 apart, but I'm pretty sure the Growler V2 is on liners with washers. But I, again, I could be misremembering. This is the first one I've seen on their premium versions that have bearings riding on liners so no washers on the inside of this one and i don't know if that's so they could keep it thin enough to be able to get the back strap on there or if it helps to keep the cost down a little bit uh, in order to do the titanium back strap but i know it's probably a little bit more expensive from what i recall i think uh, to do this titanium back strap with this one here they you know they did the best that they could to keep this at this price point but i think in future if a knife design like this comes out or their premium versions come out they may jump up to 225 to 250 for what you're getting and truth be told that's still phenomenal value these are really competitive with like a kaiser Militaw or a kaiser sparrow granted those have s35 and s45 in variants um, the, one, the 160s are the S35 Yen variants, but when you look at their S45 Yen variants with the DLC and the black uh, stone washed, those are coming in at just over 200, and these are competing with those. So I really can't say that I blame Devo for needing to bump these up based off of economy, cost, um, profit margins, everything like that in order to continue to operate for these to jump up there. But that's neither here nor there. We're here to talk about the Fireball, and I really like this design a lot. You have one means of deployment. You do have an opening hole. Unique design here as, as well. It's kind of like a pill shape almost, but a little bit sharper on the cutouts here from a pill shape. So I like that for the reverse flick. Works really good for that thumb flick. Very good. Uh, Detent is top, really dialed here. It's actually quite a shaker to get it home. There's no drop at all here, and I've been carrying this one for about a week now. I wanted to spend more time with this one before doing the review, and um, it, it is just really, really well done. I like the thickness of the handle here. Uh, I have the tall boy. I feel like the tall boy is a little bit more narrow in some spots. This feels like it's a little bit thicker back here, and I really do actually like that ergonomically to have that little bit of extra girth. I like this unique pivot shape. I think it's really nice. I like that they did that. Uh, the back strap on here is very comfortable like this. You feel no hot spots because it's chamfered and radius very well. But truth be told, uh, my tall boy with the fat carbon scales, those are really good. They did chamfer it. There's really no hot spots. Really good access to the lock bar. It reminds me a lot of the tall boy here and how you access that lock bar. Very generous, very easy to get to, and very easy to manipulate. Now, as far as cutting, it it has S90V. Kubi seems to be doing a really bang-up job on their S90V. It held an edge, edge very well with all the cutting all collectively that I've done. But in this video, through the catalog paper, good. Through the cardboard, excellent with this hollow grime. Due to the blade shape on here, excellent utility cutter. Just performed very, very well. And I know ergos are important to Stasa. Ergonomically, guys, this thing is super comfortable. The jumping's in a great spot. It lands in a nice spot to where you can go out with the thumb and still have a lot of cutting edge for those control cuts. You can pull in 
and it's very comfortable here to get into the meat of it and then for me with the pinch grip i really liked it for me with the larger hands way out here on the swedge so i'm able to articulate push and drive power out into the tip to get into something that might be a little bit more dense but that may require you to have control and then it's very easy to maintain going through the controlled cuts as well now this is a very unique design and the pocket clip works really well what I will say here that I noticed from the tall boy, which I'll bring out here in a minute, is they did cut that angle out a little bit better. So it grabs and goes into the pocket. Now it is, I do, I did have to like take it and relieve some tension on it just to the point where I could take some of the spring out and it not become a tapper. Uh, cause it was grabbing a little too tight. Like it was like, uh, gritty. Is that the right word I'm looking for when you were pulling it out of the pocket? When you were pulling it out, it felt like it was kind of pulling the material with the knife out. So it was getting bunched up a little bit. But once I figured out like the sweet spot with it, it works really, really good. Good retention in and out of the pocket well. And I like the style. I think it looks awesome. I, I love that they decided to do something a little bit different here. You got some fag, frag pattern on the back strap, but it's not in the way and it doesn't intrude with the flow of the pocket clip in and out of the pocket. And then they're offering lefties, but they're also carrying extra back spacers and i think they did that in case they don't sell all the lefties they can sell you a right hand carry pocket clip and you can flip it over or back strap so you can flip it over and flip the pocket clip which works perfectly with it so i really like the three quarter length back spacer um i guess it's not really a back spacer right it's a back strap so i like that three quarter length i like the uh, cutout holes here to keep the weight down i think it looks good i think it'll be nice when you have to blow out any of the dirt and debris it'll still let you be able to do that and the same you can blow it out to the holes as well but i will say it does make it for a little bit more of an intricate job to disassemble this so it is t8 throughout if i recall correctly hold on let me uh just double check that think it yeah yeah t8 t8 and t8 and then you got one more here this is t8 when you take the back strap off it's going to be a little hard to see but if i grab the flashlight i think we'll be able to do that with the back strap you'll see you have two more standoffs inside the knife here for stability so the back strap i think you know with the liners i don't know if screwing them into the liners pulls them in tight enough but they have two standoffs inside so this thing is really overbuilt to be hard use guys and those are t6 and they're flat scale t6 so definitely you want a fresh bit when you're going to take this apart because you don't want to strip those so you have one two three four five t8s that you're going to take off here and then you have four more t6s underneath to take apart so a little bit more involved with that i would have said just have the one extra standoff in here for that t6 and get rid of the other standoff i, I think the back strap is really going to prevent you being able to to squish this down now maybe they started that way and they figured that it wasn't quite enough rigidity for them to be able to make that work and they needed that secondary back spacer or standoff or whatever you want to call it that's underneath it here so i'm saying that thinking that you could probably just get away with the one and then once you screw this in it's going to pull the liner in to that back strap and that's going to give it the strength that you need because it's no different than when you strap or screw down onto a screw hole as opposed to just having the one to make sure that your liner is pushed out far enough so that when you screw these other two screws into the liner it's going to pull that liner into the back strap and that'll actually add that rigidity that you're looking for five millimeter three sixteenth ball i want to say actually let's just pull it out real quick to make sure that i'm telling you guys correctly yeah so five millimeter one sixteenth i'm glad i pulled that out five millimeter one teen one sixteenth eleven ball for your bearings 
and there will not be a separate disassembly video for this one just because I know that Kevin already did one for his. If you really want one, I guess let me know in the comments and I'll do one. But Kevin uh, over on Lefty EDC already disassembled these, so I don't know that I want to repeat that. I think a lot of our viewers overlap. But if you want to, I can disassemble it and post that up there. You guys just let me know. All right, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons, weigh the knife, and then we'll score it out. All right, guys, here we go. We got a couple of size comparisons on the table. We got the pair of three lightweight and the got the Manix two lightweight. And you can see this is definitely more of your medium sized EDC. Very comparable to your pair of three lightweight. Not quite as long, but it doesn't have that forge hole. It has the landing pad. So without having to have this kind of grooved cut out for you to put your index finger in with it landing on it's just not spaced out so ergonomically it actually works very well but it's very comparable uh in length to that pair of three lightweight let's do a couple more all right, guys, I couldn't do size comparisons without bringing out a couple of Devos, right? So we got the Devo Knives Lush on the bottom, and we got the Devo Knives Tallboy on the top. And as you can see, it does kind of sit in between. It is a little close to the Lush, more so than it is the Tallboy, but truth be told, it is, you know, really nice ergonomically because I can get a four-finger grip on that Lush, no issues whatsoever. Let me grab the scale, we'll check the weight, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, we got the scale out here and on. Let's check out the weight on the Fireball. Fireball coming in at 3.7 ounces. I am curious to see how it compares to the Tallboy, which does feel lighter. I think that titanium back strap is adding just 0.2 ounces onto it, maybe. Ooh, 0.5 ounces. So it is coming in 3.2 versus 3.7. So there is definitely a small amount of weight added onto that. But I'll be honest with you, that actually does feel like it adds some substantial girth. Like it feels like it's a stronger knife because of that extra weight. I know that's just all in the head, all in the mind. Uh, but that there is that to take into consideration. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. All right, final thoughts and impressions on the Fireball, guys. I really like this one a ton. Uh, I think aesthetically, it looks really sharp. I think the execution by Kubi on this was really well done. Very good design cues. Very comfortable ergonomically. I love the unique factor of the back, back strap on here and how that works with the pocket clip. Would it have been cool if it could have been reversible? Yes. Would it have taken away from the aesthetics? Yes. So there's trade-offs here that you have with that. Um, the transitions are really well done on mine. I'm not feeling any huge things. Maybe it jumps, steps up just a tiny, tiny little bit there. Um, but here, the transitions feel very consistent, especially considering you have the frag on there, which can throw it off as you're feeling it. It may feel like it's a little off. But everything feels really good. Again, just a tiny little step up there, but nothing much at all. Everything else they did a fantastic job with. Good access to the lock bar. Hollow ground S90V blade with the utility blade shape is always going to be a hit with me. Um, if that's not your aesthetic, it may not work for you. I don't think many Devos would except perhaps the Growler. Um, if you don't like uh, a utility blade shape, they did a good job with that machine satin finish. I love the pill-esque shaped blade shape hole there. Um, the modified sheep's foot. Really nice. In and out of the pocket well, easy to, dis um, not as easy to disassemble. That might knock off a little bit for that. Uh, so I think, if I recall from memory, I think I gave an 8.2 to the Devo Knives Tallboy. Um, the Tallboy still remains my absolute favorite Devo to date, even with the Fireball coming out. But I'm going to go ahead and give the Fireball an 8.1. Uh, some of the things that take away from that, the additional weight. The additional difficulty to disassemble it a little bit pulls it back for me. Um, I do like that the tall boy has the thumb studs and the opening hole, but I don't want them to do the same thing with all of their stuff. So I kind of get that. Um, I would have loved to have seen washers, hardened washers for the bearings to ride on. But having said that, uh, perhaps these are heat treated liners that are strengthened. So I don't really need to worry about that. I'll keep an eye on that in the long term. I'm not going to deduct anything for that. But that's just a side note on there. Sharpening choil is done pretty good here. You got a lot of life on there. They did a good job pushing them to get that plunge grind back. And I love the revised pocket clip. That's the other thing I wanted to show you guys. The, uh, the revised pocket clip here, the nose on it. If you can see that there, it's a sharper angle on it for the fireball. 
and it is not on the tall boy so that was something that pulled the tall boy back a little bit for me was that pocket clip i had to do the same thing i had to adjust the tension this out of the box went in and out better but this one here uh i think it needs i think it needs material added back in to soften that scallop there i think what's happening is it's catching and pulling that material down um so i think they need to have them like soften that angle and make it a little bit more slippery but perhaps it's something with the fact that that might make it not stay in the pocket as well excellent detent this thing is perfectly tuned for that opening hole you got lots of room to get to that opening hole there um, i think they probably could have left a little bit of material on there but it's it's comfortable in hand and um, it looks good. So I, I really don't know that that matters to me. What do you guys think about the tall boy? Are you gonna be picking one up? They're dropping, dropping on October 17th. I'm gonna push this video out at the beginning of that week to give you plenty of time to check out this review. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do the disassembly. I'm gonna do the disassembly video really quick after this just to show you guys. That way you have all the information and you're armed with it so you can see that when you get there. But eight ones where I landed on this one let me know what you think down in the comments below it'll be linked in the comments below as well code jd for edc will save you 10 percent at checkout this will only be available at devoknives.com again all that's going to be linked below definitely use your boys links and codes let them know who sent you thanks for hanging out with me today if you enjoyed the video leave a like if you enjoyed the content and this is your first time seeing the video consider subscribing i'd love to have you follow along special thanks to my channel members i'm out of here i love you all have a fantastic week Peace.